yes. have to come from across the country into that place to come and lift fuel. So that's one. So there shouldn't be 3,000 trucks in a papa. Converging on any one, part and of and the And they do box. that every day. Now, so this is important for people to understand. So that's one. Yes. Then the second thing is that there's a lot of cargo coming through people importing rice, importing vegetable oil, importing vehicles. So all of those containers too have to move out. So add maybe at a very understated number, 1,000, and yes. it's usually more. So 4,000 tankers and trucks, trailers. trailers every day. So that's the recipe for pain that you see there. So until the federal government gets its act right. Yes. So the answer is not just coming to come and repair roads. Mm. The roads won't last either. So the answer mm. is real. So with all this grandstanding that the rail is working, yes. I think the real grandstand and the real show is to move those 4,000 trailers and tankers by rail. And then we can say hurrah. That really is the deal. So all of this sloganeering mm. and all, it's not going to take us anywhere. The job has to be done. Yes. Now, part of the information that was made public was that the cargo handling equipment yes. that was to have been provided by the concessionaire, which is subject to the regulatory authority of the Federal Ministry of Finance, mm -hmm. was not enough. So it takes longer time to process one container through the port than it should. So it's just a suboptimal, amateurish management and operation mm -hmm. between concessionaire and government yes. at the federal level that is inflicting pain on the people of Apapa. So when I go there, it's just to try and put men and resources there to relieve the pain. We have seven inner roads that we are building in Apapa. Julius Berger has also complained to me that, look, they're having delays in getting sand, material, iron rods into the site because they spent and it's going to translate to increased cost of executing those contracts. Mm. So Lagos State Government itself is suffering because we will ultimately have to pay for long hours mm. that were not factored into the contract model. Yes. So it's a federal government inefficiency. Mm. And the time has come for us to just honestly say that that government has demonstrated that it should not be entrusted with the affairs of Nigeria. It is perhaps possible to argue that they have given their best. The honest truth, given today's realities, is yes. that their best is not good enough. Congratulations, anyway, on a successful draw, the Lagos Home Ownership Mortgage. Most inquiries from viewers who keep writing to me, they want to know when the rent-to-own thing will start. Has that kicked off yet? No, 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 it hasn't kicked off. Okay. Um, you see, the rent-to-own itself is a rent to own to mortgage. It's not rent to own and you pay a lump sum and no, no, buy it. No, 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 no. What you have now is pay 30% and then pay monthly for 10 years. Right. Some people can't put that 30% together. So what the rent to own is going to give you is you move in, you are a tenant. Yes. Out of your monthly rent, a certain percentage of it is for using the building. The rest is a saving you are making to accumulate your 33, 30%. So that should be anything between three, five to six or seven years. Those are the fine details that we're working through. Mm -hmm. By the time you have accrued that, you are using the house. And yes. you know, as you're using the house, wear and tear, we mm -hmm. need to keep that house in shape. Because mm -hmm. if you suddenly decide that you don't want to buy it, I should be able to put it back in the market for And sell to somebody else. The only thing you will lose then is the share of your rent to own mm -hmm. that is for use. The share that is your saving, you will collect it back and move somewhere else, if that is your choice. But we're working the numbers. You see, the critical thing about this is sustainability. A model that is now delivering 200 homes a month. I've checked many jurisdictions. I can't find its equal. None. By government. Delivering 200 homes a month. I've checked within Africa and outside Africa. I'm still looking. And I'd like somebody to point me in any part of the world where government is delivering 200 homes every month. Any one of the winners of mm. these homes, have they had any challenges with payments? You know, not, Nothing that has been reported to me. There may be problems, yeah. but I mean, as I said, the process is running off me mm. and able to stand on its own. So if they don't think that it's important enough, they will do, that's why they're employed to deal with problems. Mortgages have problems all over the mm. world. 
your interest rate, your account yes. is not well, this time. Mm. So, those are regular day-to-day -day operations. And yes. I don't, don't think that those things haven't been brought to my attention. Yeah. But the point I was making was sustainability. How to keep the 200 there for, that must be taken for granted. And then how to make it 300, make it 400, mm. and hopefully get it to a place where we can say we are doing 1,000 homes every month. We have a huge deficit to claw back. When we started it, the financial curve and sustainability yield was seven years. In seven years, as it stands today, Lagos State Government will not have to put money anymore to build a house because the income that is coming from the money the others will be enough to keep the system going forever if nobody interferes with it right. in an adverse way. So if there's any interference, it must be in a positive way mm. to add to that capacity. To it, yes. So now that we are trying to design a rent-to-own scheme, mm. which is going to delay when that 33% comes in, yes. it's going to affect that sustainability curve. And those are the mathematics and the numbers that our team is working out. And we meet every month. So until we are, we are we're satisfied that we found the answer, then we can't... You can't plan. roll out. Uh, but we've met last month. We'll meet again, I think, by the end of uh, October mm. and see what the technical committee has come up with for us to consider. Mm. But it's a commitment we have made that we will do, but we need to do it in a way that keeps the scheme alive rather than that diminishes from the scheme. And the Lagos Energy Academy... Has it admitted its first set of students or people watching now who, you yes, know? Yes, we have. I mean, you saw them in the classroom mm. when we went to open the academy. They've yes. been in training. So for me, that was just a ceremonial visit to yes. flag off our energy conservation month, which is October. And uh, so you will see the connection, all of what we're talking about, mm. agri, transport, housing, mm. energy, power, mm. and those are the, the, the paths. Path. And um, in roads, I remember in 2011, when you were campaigning for a second term, one of the promises you made, 400 inner city roads, how far have you gone with those? You know, we're eight months down the line now. I need to months. check now with the Commissioner for Works yes. exactly how many roads we have completed. But I know that we are very, very close. We have awarded, I believe, all of the four red roads. What has been completed is what I need to get uh, currency. But the last time I reported, which is I think about three or six months back, we yes. had done uh, more than 50 percent of, of what we committed mm. to mm. and many more as i told you we have about seven in apapa under construction uh, we have in Ijorabadia, we have in shomolu we have in alimosho mm. merino road onison street in i believe in shomolu we have mm. igiolugbe in mm. shomolu we have in uh, my 12 we have in badagri tedi Mude. Across the state. No there? one is ignored. No area no, has been no, ignored. No, 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 not at all. This distribution. And the plan now is to start because we've essentially finished. So mm. the plan now is even to make it easier for the next government, do an audit of the next batch of roads, yes. do the costing, and leave it behind. That this, you might want to consider this next 400 as the next batch. Yes. That's 10,000 roads. Plus, about 6,000 of them belong to the local governments, about 3,000 plus belong to the state, yes. and about 100 and something, I think, belong to the federal government. Mm. So it's still a distance to go. The work is not finished by mile, yes. you know, but what is interesting now is that there's a plan that you can hold us to. This was how it was when I was a child. Yes. First national development plan, um, yes. second. So this is, this is really the character of the APC now and Lagos State and all of the other states. Mm. A government that sets a target and pursues it rigorously and yes. stays focused, yeah. delivers and comes to report that this one is done. Yes. So let's do the next one. What was the idea behind the October 15 Horn Free Day? Very simple. <laughs> I've said consistently and I'll say again, for me, the hardest part of my job is the protection of human life. And their property. That's the hardest part. And protection of human lives 
and, and their property, especially human life, yes. because you can replace property. doesn't start and end for me mm. with policemen and guns and all of that. Yeah. There's a lot more to it. Ebola was a human life threat. Yes. So healthcare is a very, very major component of my capacity as governor to live up to that responsibility. Mm -hmm. And our preventive healthcare strategies, diabetes, and all of those things we've yes. done, the 10 MCCs for mothers and their babies to reduce infant and maternal mortality, all of the extended maternity vacation for <laughs> nursing mothers. Because if we are saying, the scientists and the experts have told us, look, listen, one year full breastfeeding yes. is ideal. And we are giving nursing mothers three months and we are championing the same course. Then we are acting tongue in cheek. If we really mean it, let's do it. In any event, what productivity can you get from a nursing mother of three months when half of her mind is at home? Yes. Let her stay at home. Six months, the child is crawling. Yes. A lot more steady. A few immunization shots have been taken. Then yes. The child is healthier. So again, it's back to human life and property. Mm. So what did we see? We saw that there was a lot of noise pollution. It was having adverse health effects. It was responsible from scientific evidence for aggression, sometimes violence. And when you are stressed, yeah. you can react. So, and then we saw a lot of impatience mm. and all of this resulting in accidents, oftentimes taking life. So it's not about, therefore, life expectancy being diminished by failure of healthcare anymore. Yes. It's now by road traffic accidents. You know, we were talking about Ebola and the whole country had about, I think, 20 cases. In one state last week, cholera killed 20 people. One state. And no one's talking about uh, cholera. So, and that is something that has a cure. How many people have died in tanker explosions? All of these were avoidable. So that's the underpinning philosophy. Let's look at this. And so let's interrogate ourselves. These are the things that we can control. Mm. Should I use a horn or not? Why do I use the horn? I'm usually in a hurry. I'm not as caring. I'm intolerant. Yes. So why don't I just take all of that and roll it back? And it can be a really wonderful experience. Yeah. A noiseless environment is a much more productive environment. This is scientific. What was the feedback? Feedback was interesting. The debate has started. And uh, that for me is the most important Success. Interestingly, yes. one of my officers was telling me about his colleague that they got home and uh, it was a big debate. <laughs> well, that's a horn to for the gate to be opened. So, <laughs> he says that the driver did horn and then the cabinet said, well, come on, president. He said, but all that you people declare home free day. <laughs> I said, oh. So he went to get up and called the guard to open the door and the man said, oh, okay, take. That's, that's a nice one. Yes. Okay, so that for me is success. Yes. The discussion for us to make voluntary choices. Yes. Does this work for me or not? That, that is the most important thing. Yeah. And I think we've won mm. even before we started. How much success will we now see when people are voluntarily convinced to change what is unhealthy for them? Is, and trust me, if I know our people as I think I do, mm. once they are convinced, about something they will make change by themselves mm. interestingly i saw one group an ngo on on one of the reports extreme ideas yes. they call themselves they just said look this is our own now yes they so owned and, it yeah and i think that everybody should take ownership mm. of it as a way of life in other jurisdictions the way that we use the car horn you would never qualify for a driver's license you can't horn around the hospital in exactly. england exactly hospital instance. the courts the schools yes so this is a call to better traffic and driving mm. habits and etiquette yes. and once we acquire that it will translate not only to general well-being yes. it will translate to reduce road traffic accidents and deaths that come from there so for me we're good to go mm. <laughs> join us again after the break
Welcome back. My concluding moments now with the governor of Lagos State, Babatunde Fashola. In the last couple of months, you've been giving some speeches and I've been following all your speeches on value reorientation. The former governor of Bielsa State, Timipre Silva, for instance, was 50. You gave a speech there. On October 1, Independence Day, you also gave a speech where you spoke about the spirit of Lagos. And I want us to look at all those speeches now. At uh, Governor Silva's birthday, you said, um, states controlled by the APC perform better than the PDP and that Nigerians were worse off than they were four years ago. And I didn't agree with that. There's some PDP governors who've done well. I didn't single out any governor. Right. Pound for pound. What about those pound who... Pound for pound. Yes. I'm not talking about individual effort. When you color the country, how many states do the PDP control? Uh -huh. How many states do the APC control? What yes. is the developmental level? What is the resource income levels? Right. And you can make your... I'm not singling out any one of my colleagues. Mm. I can say that... Uh, on a comparative basis, the time of governors from 2007 to 2011 yes. have just moved things forward in terms of quality of service from yes. where they took off from the class of two, 1999 to 2007. 2007. And one just expects that the class of 2015 and beyond mm. can only do better. On a national level, it's quite a different thing. Do you have fuel? Do you have energy? And it's not me asking. Just ask. I mean, it's not me saying. Ask the ordinary Nigerian. Yeah, do, do, do they have jobs? Yes. Now, how many lives have we lost in peacetime? And when we advertise 5,000 jobs and 50,000, 60,000 people appear in one out of like 30 centers, what does it say about where the problems lie? And if we are unable to connect the management of the economy to electricity to lack of production and jobs then we have a problem but some people would say to you that all these problems you've listed they're problems that have gathered over the years uh, you know is are, are these things we're going to solve overnight i mean you are going to leave some things behind the government yeah. continues well, i agree i agree the the question always is that these things are located within a space of for four years. And for me, the question is, were the last four years better than the one before? And people mm. must understand yes. that I am a citizen first before I am a governor. And I will remain a citizen. And I'm entitled to talk about my country, whether I have a political leaning or not. Mm. Have people expressed to you about your recent politicking? You know, suddenly people are seeing you as what a more I political animal with, no, with I some I of think the that we often too quickly ascribe yes. politicking every day we politic and i've made the point to those who care to be reflective that yes. from inside their homes every morning the politics start <laughs> so you can choose to ignore it and see only those who hold public offices as politicians 